Hey guys, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and today I'm here with Colin, who has his own channel, Classy Herps, and if you're not watching it, you should be. It kind of went dormant for a while, but you're back now, right? Yeah, I'm kind of making some new videos now, kind of highlighting the new projects that we have going on over here, getting you guys updated on things again. Uh, and, and one thing, too, that you guys don't realize that, well, hell, we might as well tell you over here, is, uh, watch out, Ty. Go ahead and so, say hi to Ty, Dr. Kurt, because he's going to come in here. Say hi to Ty, and now kick Ty out of the room. Bye, Ty. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> is Colin and myself and camera guy Kurt, and another guy that you haven't met on YouTube that much yet by the name of, uh, we'll call him Scaly Dave, are all kind of partnered up. And this Manhattan Reptile World you've heard us talk about, the big news is we all kind of own that together. So you're going to see a lot of me and Colin together. Uh, and you're also going to see, hopefully, some of Scaly Dave. I think he's a little camera shy, though. I don't know. Dave? Yeah. yeah. Which is weird, because he's not a shy person. But uh, we got something cool to show you today. They're making lots of noise down here. They get Probably all here. fired up. Yeah. But this is our collection of Gila monsters. These guys are some unique lizards. One of only two venomous species of lizards in the entire world. There's these guys and Komodo dragons. Now, some argue that you can kind of say three. Oh, geez, they're getting on each other there. <laughs> so we do have a pair of uh, a male and a female here. All right, so here are the two males. That's right, Colin? Yeah, we got the two males here. They have a little bit bigger heads than the females do. Um, and these guys are actually two of, I guess you could call them morphs, but um, this one right here is what they call a banded. You can see he kind of has some horizontal stripes that go across his body. He's a little bit lighter colored. The one that Matt's holding there is called a reticulated, and they have all kinds of crazy wavy patterns. Um, and uh, the female that's crawling up the tub right here is the banded, and then that other female over there is the reticulated female. So we have a pair of each of them. And as I was talking about earlier, um, these guys have a very close, uh, closely related cousin uh, known as the Mexican beaded lizard. And those guys get a lot bigger than these guys do, and they're also venomous. Um, they're not actually separate species, though. They're subspecies. Um, so uh, whether you want to classify those as the same or not is uh, kind of up to you. Now, one thing about these guys, a couple things I want to point out. One, if you're going to own them, they are a protected species. So they have to be capped with bread, and you're going to have to have proof of that. We do keep our paperwork, got a niche, we do keep our paperwork in our safe. We have proof that all of ours are captive bred and legal to own. So don't just go out and pick up a Gila monster from some guy because you may not know what you're going to get. The other thing is, they are a venomous lizard, so they're going to take some precaution. And you see Cole and I are both rehandling these. And the reason we can do that is they're not very quick. So if you kind of go in there and grab them like a jungle cat, then you can get them behind the head. You can see the large gels. They have very strong jaws. So you can get them behind there, and then you can't really be bit. They are very good at moving their head side to side, and they clamp on. When these guys envenomate you, they work different than a snake. They're going to bite, and they're going to hold on. Their delivery system is terrible when you look at like what fangs. They don't really have those. They have these teeth. They're going to bite you with those teeth, and they are going to just chew that venom into the wound. Because of that poor delivery system, the venom is actually pretty toxic, but the delivery is so poor that there hasn't been any deaths attributed to these guys. But uh, the bite is supposed to be one of the most painful bites out there. It's not something I want to take. And I would make an argument that uh, there's probably a lot of people who've gone missing in the desert, never been found. So these guys, the potential is there because the venom has shown to cause uh, the heart rhythms to change. Anything that's making your heart rhythm get kind of out of whack has potential to be lethal. So they are not to really be messed with. Uh, you know, you don't want to just free handle them without having, you know, that head under control. And I'm not squeezing hard. I'm just making sure he can't turn to the side and bite me. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So, anything else you want to add about these guys, Colin? Yeah, as Matt was talking about their venom, it is a, it's a hematoxic venom. And so it, it is similar to rattlesnake's venom, but it is evolved differently. And so the, the venom isn't actually used to hunt prey. They don't actually use their venom to kill a mouse. Um, for example, like a rattlesnake does, it's a purely defensive uh, mechanism that uh, has only evolved in lizards instead of snakes. Um, so these guys can only eat things that can't run away from them. So in the wild, what they're going to do is they're going to go into a mouse den, the adults are going to run away, and then they're going to go in and eat the baby. So they'll find a quail nest and they'll eat the eggs. Um, so they're, they're pretty, uh, they're very slow, lethargic animals that don't do much in the wild. Um, but their venom isn't meant to kill you. It's meant for you to leave them alone. <laughs> right, it's a defensive bite. Yeah. Uh, they do kind of have a warning with that. If you ever see one open their mouth, I can look at them, they'll do it. Ah! 
he's not going to do it for me. This really dark black inside. Think of like a black mamba. Not quite as black as that, but uh, and that's the way they can show you that, hey, I'm big and I'm bad, and if you get close to me, I'm going to hurt you. So uh, they're best if you come across them in the wild, which is extremely rare. They don't come out much. Uh, the rains in the desert will bring them out, yep. I do believe. Yep. Just take a few pictures, you know, clap your hands, say it's really cool, and move on. Yep. And consider yourself from lucky. These guys. So, they spend about 80% of their life sleeping down underground. So uh, if you do happen to see one, you are a pretty lucky person. Yeah. Anyway, I think they're really cool. They're also very, very much North American, very much yeah. American. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I like... Being some, I'm an, I mean, on YouTube is national, or not national, it's international, but you know, I was born in America, I've lived in America my whole life, I'm fascinated with all things, you know, like wildlife that comes from here to include the rattlesnakes of, of uh, the United States and also these guys, and then their close cousin, the Mexican beetle lizard, to our neighbors to the south. So really cool that these have developed here in North America, and we have the only two truly venomous lizards. You know, the research is still going on with, like, Komodo dragons and other monitors to see if that's an actual venom or just a weird saliva, which is kind of what a venom is anyway. It's yep. a highly specialized saliva, but uh, pretty neat stuff. Cool. Or Kurt, any questions? So how large do they get? Are these adults? These yep. are adults. Yep. These are actually large adults. Honestly, in the wild, um, they're not going to be quite so fat, <laughs> you know. <laughs> these are healthy, spoiled adults. These guys get fed pretty good. Yes. Uh, and just look at that face. It's easy to see where the term monster comes from. Yeah. Man, look at that. Just, yeah. You can come up and get close, Kurt. I won't let him bite you. I promise. Oh, my God. He lost a finger. No, I'm kidding. But just oh, a really cool pattern. One man. fun fact that I do want to throw out there that always kind of blows my mind whenever I see it. If you guys want to Google a Gila monster skull, you see all the bumps on his head there? Those aren't actually in the skin. Um, if you look at their skull, they have one of the only skulls out of the entire animal kingdom that isn't smooth. Those lumps are actually part of bone. And uh, when you take the skin off, it, their head, their skull looks just like that. All lumpy. Uh, no one really knows why, but one of the only animals in the world that doesn't have smooth skull bone. I learned something new every day. <laughs> yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And look for a lot more videos from uh, here, us here at Reptile World. Also, if you're not subscribed to Classy Herps, go check it out. It's going to be more active now. And, uh, you know, you're going to see a lot more, I call it cross-pollinating of our videos because we're going to be working on a lot of things together, including our YouTube stuff. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully we see you again real soon.